welcome back. Ha! We're out riding. We're enjoying, well, we're enjoying the last time you're ever gonna see this view right here of my stock handlebar setup. Because we're putting new handlebars on today. See, one of my favorite things about handlebar jobs as a highly trained unprofessional doing the work, and just as an owner of a motorcycle, I like handlebars the most because they fit everything about an accessory that you're looking for. The style, the fit, and the performance of the motorcycle are all changed by handlebars. I don't think there's another single part that, that single-handedly nails all three components at the same time. Let's get to the shop and we'll start this handlebar job. For those of you that don't know me, my name is John Max. I'm a highly trained unprofessional right here at Chattahoochee Harley-Davidson. And on this channel, I bring you guys to work with me. So if you want to learn more about Harley-Davidson, you should hit the subscribe button right now. Those of you that have seen my videos before know that I've done a lot of handlebar jobs on this channel. Oh yes. But this one is my bike and I'm a lot more excited to get it done than those other ones. I'm gonna speed through some parts of the video. I'll stop here and there to give you some tips on 18 and later soft tail specific stuff. I'm gonna show off the Carlini 14 inch Evil Apes in black that I've gotten for the bike. And uh, yeah, let's get the video rolling. I usually take the takeoff on a handlebar job. I get asked all the time whether it's necessary. On a soft tail, all of your electrical connections are here, covered up by the tank in this general region. And the new ones don't have a crossover tube that goes below the frame like previous 17 and earlier models. The latest model Tourings, the Sportsters, none of them have crossover lines anymore. It's just a couple of bolts, the fuel pump plug-in, a vent tube, it doesn't take very long to take it off and it'll make it a lot easier for me to get to those electrical connections. Some of these clamp bolts. A bunch of stuff like that that I just don't have to worry about a tool hitting the tank or anything like that. And I can move a lot faster if I'm not worried about nicking paint or something like that. With the tank out of the way, I can really start moving and grooving on this job too. So far out of all of the soft tail handlebars I've done, none of them have had this leather piece attached. I don't really want to have to replace these, so I just removed the whole thing. Normally I can keep it out of the way, but if you let this hang off, it'll, it gets all gross. Before I pull the electrical, including the twist grip sensor, through these handlebars, the stock ones, I need to take the connectors off. I'm going to take them off to pull them through the new handlebars anyway. I use a little Allen key that I filed down the end of for this particular type of connector. It's the handlebar connector on your BCM models. Talked about what your models those are before, but they're little babies. Also, I have tiny little screwdrivers that I filed down, some special tools, particularly for taking connectors apart. The reason why I paused to even bring this up is because the most common do-it-yourself problem I see with handlebar jobs, why they end up in the shop looking complete but they're not complete, is connector damage. So the locking mechanism inside the connector is broken and the wire isn't making a good contact to the wire of the main harness, so the bike either won't turn on or the turn signals don't work, whatever the case. That's generally what I end up having to go behind someone to fix. So make sure you have a good tool, you don't tear up the connector, and you take them apart. That way your handlebar job will actually work when you're done. I 
I should add, I don't actually take the twist grip sensor connector apart. It, I always end up breaking it. It's like seven bucks and, well, who wants to spend seven extra dollars? I do take the heated hand grip connector part, the, the two wire, take that one apart. I'm not gonna have heated hand grips anyway, so I'm not even gonna put it back on. There's no power on it because the circuit isn't complete because there isn't heated electrical. Oh yes, my new handlebars. I probably should have checked them out before, make sure there's no scratches or blemishes or anything. I was just really excited and I forgot. This is a good time to add though that Carlini does have a blemish uh, tab on their website because you might actually want a pair that is not absolutely perfect if you plan to paint or powder coat them to match your bike. It's a good way to add some super extra custom to your bike and it's an opportunity to buy a less expensive version to do that with instead of the full price, perfectly good version and then having to you know, take chrome or powder coat off of it to then be able to powder coat or paint it. Uh, do this on a protected surface, please. It's another do it yourself or mistake I see a lot as a set of bars that has like those scratches back and forth where obviously they got rubbed across some rough surface. So beautiful. <laughs> All right, some things about the ones I picked. These are inch and a quarter. There isn't a better one inch or inch and a quarter. It, it just, you pick which one matches your bike. Some manufacturer make an inch and a half now. Fat front end, fat handlebar. It just looks better. I ran one inch on my Sportster because it's a narrow front end, you know, smaller, skinnier front end. And I run one inch on my Springer Bad Boy because it's a FX, smaller, skinnier front end as well. But the Heritage has a big old fat front end with passing lamps and a nacelle and a fat seven inch headlight. So bigger bar is just gonna look better. But my clamping area is one inch. So I'm gonna use a one inch clamping area handlebar. It is knurled, which is the only kind of handlebar that I'm gonna run. It's also notched out for a twist grip sensor, which is absolutely necessary for this model. I should add though, if it's notched for twist grip sensor and you don't have a twist grip sensor need, an electronic throttle, a, if you use throttle cables, the notches aren't gonna prevent a throttle grip from turning. So you can go either way, but if you need it and you don't have it, well, you're gonna have to cut it yourself or change up your handlebars. When you're spending top dollar for a set of handlebars, you're gonna to wanna to get the ones that are already notched. Who wants to buy a $400 handlebar and then still have to do work to make it work on your bike? Now, speaking of that right side, I have to pull two sets of wires through that side for the switches and for the throttle. I use two strings to get through there. Now I'll be able to pull both of them through at the same time, instead of pulling one and then another, because that, my friends, makes things super difficult. I use Super 33 Plus electrical tape only. It's not cheap, but that also means it's not so cheap that it's gonna tear up. I don't know, it costs like five bucks a roll where you can get a 99 cent roll, but then you gotta like, pull your, your stuff back apart, retape it, and all that crap if it breaks. Get the good stuff. And please pull the right side switches through the right side of the bar. That sucks when you do it backwards. Never done that. Wire pulling lubricant. So that I don't hate my life in about 13 seconds. Yeah. The only downside of wire pulling lubricant is then the end of the wire is all slimy so it's hard to like pull on it. 
Oh man, I've really cracked myself up. All right, now I know myself, so I know that I cut that down for time. You know, edited it, oh, ed edited it, 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 it a little bit. But that was really easy. It's one thing that if you have a handlebar job done, the outside of a bar may look really good. That doesn't mean the inside of the bar is in good, good shape for internally wiring. There's a couple brands out there that I won't mention, but while they look good and they're really popular, they're absolutely the worst quality handlebar on the inside of any other on the market. I'm not gonna cut those companies down because I don't really like doing it that way. I'm just gonna pump Carlini up. This not stepped but like tapered bar right here. So it's one inch at my grip area like it needs to be. Up two inch and a quarter. That is so smooth. This corner is smooth. This corner is smooth inside the handlebar. So my wires don't get caught on anything. It just slides right through there. I probably didn't even need the lubricant, but you know, it just makes things easier. And I'm a work smarter, not harder kind of guy. The other side goes exactly the same. So I'm not gonna make you guys watch that. It's actually even easier because there's only one wire, one set of wires that has to go through it. Wait, I lied. I have more information for you. The Heritage comes stock with cruise control. It's not a separate switch, separate from the rest of this. If you want to put cruise control on your, I'm pretty sure it's 11, no, it's 16 and later soft tail. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to go with that. 16 and later soft tail. You can add cruise to it. It's this entire housing right here. And the way you would put it on your bike is just like this. You just feed the wires through whatever handlebar you're running. So if you're doing handlebars and you eventually want cruise control, do it now. It makes more sense. Okay, now I will make you watch the rest of it. So everything is set just how I want it. Master cylinder switches, they're turned the way that I want them for the levers to be even with each other and where I want them for my fingers. It's important to do that first because I gotta figure out what length, brake line, clutch cable, and how long my electrical needs to be. People always ask me what size they need. There's not a magic number. I don't know off the top of my head. It's a matter of mocking it up, routing it, measuring it, figuring it out, what you need. But I can assure you, if you're, realistically, if you're changing your bars at all outside of 14 and later touring, you need stuff. Even the 14 and later touring need electrical extensions. So this is where my clutch cable lands. It just touches it. There's no way it would actually work while turning the handlebars and stuff. My brake line is too short. So I'm gonna show you guys how I measure it really quick and then I'll show you how to change them out on an 18 and later soft tail specifically so that you guys will have a good idea of how this new crazy clutch cable adjuster works because that's a big deal on making these handlebar jobs quicker. I've talked about Harley's measuring kit on the channel before. It's a mock clutch cable, throttle cable, and brake line with measurements along the length of it so that you know what you need. Unfortunately, it is an obsolete part. It, does, it doesn't exist anymore. Harley has a, a matrix for what their handlebars, what you would need with it. When you're doing aftermarket, it comes a little harder. I should mention too, Carlini does make cable kits. They just don't have what I want for this particular model. But you can do what I'm doing with a string or something, a, a different clutch cable, anything you might have lying around, just to kind of check out what you need. Pretty easy though, you just, clip the top into the clutch perch, and then route it the way you want it routed. You'll know that it looks good or it doesn't look good, and check the measurement off, and then I'll use the matrix in the Harley handlebar book to see what it is I need. For the brake line, it's the same concept. I'm just gonna set up a mock brake line here, route it the way it's supposed to go. I don't know what length I need. I should add though, the shape, whether this be a 180 straight like this, 
a 35 or a 90, it's purely cosmetic. It doesn't actually matter. I'm going to go for a straight on this particular set of bars because the master cylinder ends at the bar going down. Sometimes they're wider set of bars. You'll need a 90 so it can kind of hug the bar and look good. The last step is to check my electrical out. I happen to know that the electrical extensions that Harley sells are 10 inches. So I just took a piece of string, taped 10 inches away, and made sure that it'll be long enough. Truth be told, I already checked it. So I'm gonna order the parts based on what numbers are in the Harley parts book, and we'll get it put together in, well, just saying for you guys, but a couple days for me. All right, everything I ordered is here. I overnighted it, it's only two days later. Brake line, I already lost my clutch cable. That wasn't important. Clutch cable, brake line adapter. The brake line stuff I'm gonna show you in a minute because it's pretty standard, nothing's really changed. I can just show you what it looks like installed and you'll know what the difference is. The clutch cable though, I actually had to call Harley Tech Services and ask them how to measure it because this is a new setup. So I really don't wanna like totally destroy this bag in case it's not right. See the adjuster part comes on the cable, so I didn't know like how much of this needed to be measured. Do you measure this part, do you not? He said you measured basically the inner cable. So, well, I'll show you a close up of how I install it. Hopefully you'll understand what I'm talking about. So you just bend this little tab up that's at the, this ball catch thing, bend that tab, and then there's two locking mechanisms and the whole adjuster comes apart. See, so this little hook assembly and that metal tab bends to catch the ball that's on the other side of the clutch cable. And it's all sitting inside of this piece, like so. To reinstall, you just do everything backwards. That's how things work. See that little metal tab just keeps everything, you know, keeps it from coming apart. Now I'm gonna finish installing the lever and the adjust the clutch. I've already done the bottom previously during my oil change video from last week. But I do have a full clutch adjustment video. It's linked down in the description if you need to know how to do that part. But well, let's speed this process up a little bit. be perfectly straight with you. I'm pretty mad <laughs> that I even bothered calling Harley because this clutch cable is entirely too long. It's a good two and a half, three inches longer than what it needs to be. Um, <clears throat> yeah, I'll just leave that alone. Anyway, uh, it's pretty much what I added to it when I called him to find out how to measure it. So, learn from my mistake, um, measure the sheathing down to where the adjuster starts. It's underneath this cover right now. Measure to that point, that's where you wanna be. I do, I'm still missing a clamp that's gonna go right here. So it'll get a little better looking. Uh, honestly, I'm, I'm still pretty, I mean, I'm excited, so it'll, I'll get over it. I'm not gonna wait on a new clutch cable. I gotta put the tank back on and all that. My lunch is over, so we'll just get back to this. When I'm riding it. First impression. So I did a lot with the handlebar job, not just handlebars. I did a, you know, speaker that you don't get to hear yet. That's next week's video. I think. I think. I'm not. I'm not 100. I moved my cell phone out to here because I don't want it at the perch up in the wind, really.
I got Ciro's GoPro action camera mount on the mirror mount that I've shown off before. I'll show you, show you a shot of how that's mounted up right now. I finally did run power to my cell phone mount too, so the, that mount will probably always stay there now. I did not ever get mirrors. I, I was supposed to do mirrors because I even I said that you do mirrors when you do handlebars, but I didn't do it. Go get some Petro real quick. be right back I'm going back to the house so yeah totally natural hopefully my hero 5 camera angle at the handlebar looks good handlebars feel great I'm all set for Daytona now though even though I've already been by the time you're seeing this man hella happy guys if you like this video make sure to give it a big dirty thumbs up if you want to see more content like this make sure to hit the subscribe button tap the bell notification so that you know when I upload if you hadn't quite got your fix, there's a video here and here, and I'll catch you guys in the next one.